the house breaking. Don't try to run away again, Fagin warned Oliver the following day. Just remember, you would have died of hunger if the Dodger hadn't found you along the road. If you get into trouble with the police again, I won't be able to keep you out of jail. One night, Shortly after Oliver's return, Fagin went to visit Sykes and Nancy. When can we do the robbery at Chersty? asked Fagin. It can't be done, said Sykes. None of the lady servants will go along with us. If we can't do it from the inside, how about from the outside? asked Fagin, who had his heart set on the job. I'll give you something extra. Okay, it's a deal, replied Sykes, but I've checked out the house and I'll need a person small enough to climb through a little window. Oliver's just the boy for you, said Fagin, grinning at Nancy. I have him well trained by now. He won't, he won't cause any more trouble. We'll do it the night after tomorrow then, said Sykes. There won't be a moon then. Nancy, you bring Oliver to me. Oliver was reading when Nancy arrived. She sank into a chair and moaned loudly. God, forgive me, she cried. This wasn't my idea, but Bill Sykes wants you. Do whatever he tells you to do and keep your mouth shut. He's a mean man and will kill you to save himself. What does he want me for, said Oliver. For no good, replied the girl. Nancy grabbed Oliver's hand and led him into the street. He thought of screaming for help or running away. The girl guessed what he was thinking. I've tried to help you, but I couldn't, she said, and you can't help yourself either. If you want to get away from here, now is not the time. I promised Fagin and Sykes that you would be quiet and would obey them. If you don't listen to them, harm will come to both you and me. I might even be killed. Please don't make me suffer anymore. When they came to, the, to Sykes's house, the robber held up a pistol. He loaded it and warned Oliver that if he made any noise or tried to run away, he would be shot. It was five o'clock in the morning when Sykes and Oliver left the house. The boy was given a cape to cover himself with and a big handkerchief to tie around his neck. Sykes patted the pistol in his coat pocket. Oliver turned to take a last look at Nancy, but she was staring at the fireplace. Sykes and Oliver walked for a whole day until they reached a dark, decaying house at the edge of a river. Inside, they found Toby Crackett, a gang member, resting on an old dirty couch and smoking a long clay pipe. Good to see you, Bill, said Toby. Who's the boy? This is Oliver Twist, one of Fagin's boys. Toby looked at Oliver and smiled at Fagin's choice of a new boy. His dirty fingers covered with large, cheap rings twisted the long reddish curls that made a circle around the outside of his bald head. Sykes bent down and whispered something to Toby. Then the two men tucked pistols into their belts and led, led Oliver outside into the dark, foggy night. Oliver walked between the two men until they reached a house surrounded by a wall. Toby climbed up. Then Sykes handed Oliver up to him and followed himself. Suddenly, the boy understood that they were planning a housebreaking and a robbery, maybe even a murder. Oh, for God's sake, let me go, cried Oliver. Let me run away and die in the fields. I will not tell the police on you. I will never tell the police on you. Never. Have mercy on me and don't make me steal. Sykes cursed and aimed his pistol at the boy. Toby struck the gun from his hand and dragged Oliver to the house. Sykes forced open the shutter to reveal a window behind it. The window was just big enough for Oliver to squeeze through. Take this lantern, said Sykes, handing the light to Oliver. When you get into the house, go to the front door and open it for us. I'll be holding the gun at your back, so don't try any funny business. 
Oliver crept through the window and jumped down into the room. He made his way, made his way to the door to let Toby and Sykes in. As they walked slowly down the hall, Oliver made a decision. He would run upstairs and alert the sleeping family, even if it meant his death. Suddenly, from behind his back, from behind him, Sykes was shouting, Come back! 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 Sykes called. Frightened by Sykes's voice and a loud cry from someone upstairs, Oliver dropped his lantern. The cry was repeated. A light appeared, and Oliver saw two frightened, half-dressed men at the top of the stairs. Suddenly, there was a flash and a loud noise. Oliver staggered back. Sykes fired his own pistol at the two men in the house, then dragged Oliver off the floor and through the door. The boy was bleeding badly. Oliver heard shouts and pistol shots and felt himself being carried over soft, wet ground. A cold, deadly feeling crept over the boy's heart. The noises grew dim. Then he saw and heard no more.